Let's take a look at this problem. This is one of those ones that the, the is, it seems like slightly silly in the way that it's set up, but it's making a real point, okay? So let's look at this. There's a 50 centimeter diameter styrofoam sphere, which is in water, and it's got a very low density, 32 kilograms per cubic meter. Well, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, and so this is basically negligible. When you put this under water, it's displacing a tremendous amount of water, and so as a consequence, there'll be a huge buoyant force. The huge buoyant force means that I can suspend a significant mass from it, okay? So I'm imagining a situation like this. I've got a container of water, and underneath the surface of the water, there's a gigantic styrofoam sphere. This is 50 centimeters in diameter. Okay, 50 centimeters is about a foot and a half. So this is a huge styrofoam sphere, okay? Huge styrofoam sphere, and there's some sort of a mass which is hung from it. And we're assuming that the volume of the mass is negligible, so we don't have to worry about the buoyant force on the mass. There's an upward buoyant force due to the displacement of the water, okay? There's a downward weight force on both of them. And we're told this, okay? We're told that we're looking for the maximum mass that can hang without sinking. So if it's the maximum mass that can hang without sinking, I'm assuming that the buoyant force is just equal to the weight force. So we can say that here. The buoyant force is just equal to weight. Now there's two components to the weight force, of course. There's the weight of the styrofoam and there's the weight of the object. And it's the weight of the object. This is what we're looking for right here, okay? Now, let's think about this. I'm gonna do kind of a pre-assessment before we start. This is our situation. This thing is like a foot and a half in diameter. I remember when I was a kid, I had a gigantic beach ball that was about that big. Okay, it's like an 18 inch diameter beach ball. And as a kid, I could sit on top of it and it would still float. So the mass here, I'm expecting to be more than like my mass when I was a kid, which was probably like 30 or 40 kilograms. So I'm, I'm anticipating this is going to be big, okay? Because I couldn't quite get the beach ball under the water, but almost. So I'm expecting a big mass here. But let's do some more things to prepare. Now the buoyant force we know is this. Buoyant force is equal to the density of the fluid, okay? which is just the density of water, times the volume displaced, well that's just the volume of the styrofoam sphere, times g, okay? The weight of the styrofoam sphere, of course, is just going to be equal to the mass of the sphere times g. Well the mass of the sphere is the density of the sphere times the volume of the sphere, okay? We'll let vs be the volume of the sphere. The weight of the object, this is the thing which we're looking for. Okay, now let's proceed to our solution. Let's start putting some numbers in over here. Okay? So I'm going to equate the buoyant force to the weight force. Well, the buoyant force is equal to the density of water times the volume of the styrofoam sphere times g. Well, the density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, okay? The volume of the sphere, like the volume of any sphere, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Well, the diameter of the sphere is 50 centimeters. So the radius is 0 0.25 meters, 25 centimeters. And then I multiply that times g, which is 9.8 meters per second squared. If I solve for the buoyant force, I get this. I get 641.4 newtons. Now we're keeping extra significant figures because this is an intermediate stage of the calculation. Okay? Now, this number, the buoyant force, is just equal to the weight force, but the weight force is equal to the weight of the styrofoam sphere plus the weight of the object. So I'm going to get this, 641.4 newtons is equal to the weight of the styrofoam sphere. Well, that's just the density of styrofoam, which is 32 kilograms per cubic meter, times the volume of the styrofoam sphere. And we know what that is. That's just 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. And to that, I add the weight of the object. 
Well, if I work out this expression right here, the weight of the styrofoam is 20.5 newtons. And that makes sense. That's significantly smaller than the buoyant force. Okay, This is the weight of the water that's displaced by the sphere. This is the weight of the sphere. And I expect this to be significantly lower. So the weight of the object, if we work this out, is just the difference of, of this and this, 641.4 minus 20.5. And so I end up with 620.9 newtons. That's the weight of the object. I can use that to calculate the mass of the object. And if I do that, rounding off to two significant figures, I get the mass is 63 kilograms. Now we'll do an assessment. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Well, to start the problem, I refer back to my childhood days where I said I've had an 18-inch beach ball. It could support me as a kid, but it couldn't support a large adult. Okay, And that was kind of a difficult moment in my swimming experience, which I won't talk about. But um, anyway, this number seems reasonable. It's big, but it's not ridiculously large. It's comparable to at least my experience of the world. And that's the last thing we want to check as our final stage in any problem.